higher learning institutions to reopen soon. Track down those who refuse to undergo second COVID-19 screening. Good afternoon, I'm Azlani and you're watching Updates at Noon. Schools nationwide are set to reopen in phases beginning 15 July. Education Minister Dr Razi Jidin announced this yesterday as the country enters the recovery mode after three months of strict restrictions on movement to address the spread of COVID-19. Commenting further on the matter, Dr Razi said the process would be carried out in two phases, involving a total of 4.3 million students from 10,219 primary and secondary schools. The first phase of school reopening took place on 24 June for 500,444 students from over 2,500 schools taking their public examinations this year, namely Sijil Pelajaran Malaysia SPM, Sijil Vocational Malaysia SVM, Sijil Tinggi Persekolahan Malaysia STPM, Sijil Tinggi Agama Malaysia STAM and equivalent international school examinations. Dr Razi also said the second phase starting 15 July would involve students from Form 6, Form 1 to Form 4 and Year 5 and Year 6 for primary schools as well as removed classes. He also said the third phase begins on 22nd July involving Year 1 to Year 4 pupils and primary schools. Setiap keputusan yang kami di KKM ambil untuk membuka apa sahaja peringkat persekolahan ya, kita berbincang dengan mendalam dengan teliti bersama-sama dengan pihak KKM dan juga pihak MKN. Ya, apa yang pasti risikonya tetap ada itu kita tahu bahawa risikonya tetap ada tetapi apa yang perlu dilakukan oleh pihak sekolah dan dalam konteks kami KPM adalah untuk memastikan segala uh, SOP yang ada dalam garis panduan dapat dipatuhi dengan baik the Education Ministry had on 4th June released a set of guidelines on reopening of schools that detail the necessary steps to be taken to ensure students, teachers and staff are protected. The government is set to announce the date of the universities and other higher learning institutions reopening in the nearest time. Senior Minister Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob said the announcement of the date and the standard operating procedures will be made by the Higher Education Ministry. Mesyuarat khas Menteri-Menteri mengenai pelaksanaan PKP telah meneliti pembentangan daripada Kementerian Pengajian Tinggi berkenaan dengan pembukaan semua IPT termasuklah SOP bagi kemasukan pelajar-pelajar tempatan dan antarabangsa. Mesyuarat bersetuju dengan SOP yang telah pun dibentangkan walau bagaimanapun tarikh pembukaan IPT akan diperserta dengan SOP yang terperinci akan diumumkan oleh uh, KPT mungkin oleh menteri KPT sendiri menteri uh, pengajian tinggi sendiri ya Datuk Nora ini pastinya akan mengumumkan tentang SOP detail dan tarikh pembukaan tersebut Meanwhile, Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri said the government will be mobilizing the police to track down about 1,400 individuals who refused to undergo a second screening on the 13th day of their home quarantine after returning from overseas. He said action could be taken against those found to have violated the home supervision and observation order under the Prevention and Control Infectious Diseases Act 1988 or Act 342. Ada 1,400 yang degil ni, insyaAllah kita akan hantar polis untuk mencari mereka supaya mereka menjalani uh, ujian saringan kali kedua. Okay? Jadi sama ada mereka nak tunggu polis datang ataupun mereka sendirilah 
pergi ke klinik-klinik dan sebagainya untuk uh, membuat saringan kali kedua tersebut ataupun mungkin kementerian mereka boleh menelefon kementerian kesihatan mungkin boleh membuat arrangement bagaimana nak atur untuk saringan kali kedua tersebut In a related matter, Health Director General Dato Dr. Nuhisham Abdullah said the ministry has identified the individuals who refused to undergo a second COVID-19 screening. He said the ministry has the data of these individuals, including their home address, and added that tracing measures will be implemented. Tetapi mereka tidak hadir ke klinik. Jadi sekarang ni kita akan melaksanakan iaitu pengesanan kenapa mereka tak hadir dan sebagainya. Jadi ini adalah salah satu cara Kementerian Kesihatan memberikan iaitu pemekasaan komuniti ataupun individu untuk mereka mengambil uh, uh, disiplin uh, diri sendiri untuk melaksanakan ujian tersebut ke hari ke-13 untuk tampil ke klinik uh, kesihatan ataupun ke klinik swasta. Meanwhile, Dr. Dr. Nuhisham said the targeted approach on identified high-risk groups was still ongoing, despite the low transmission rate. On another note, Dr. Dr. Nuhisham has expressed his confidence and optimism that Malaysia is capable of achieving zero positive COVID-19 case. He explained that this could be achieved if all members of the community could play their roles to maintain the zero local transmission case in the country. But what's more important for us is to maintain and sustain a zero transmission for the next 28 days. So if we can do that, I'm sure we can. But uh, if we can do that together with the public and everyone uh, 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 adhere to our SOP, I'm sure we can achieve the zero uh, cases for the next uh, uh, 28 days. Dr. Dr. Nohisham said the Health Ministry will be focusing its efforts to maintain zero COVID-19 local transmissions for the next 28 days. Yesterday, Malaysia recorded only one COVID-19 case, which is the lowest number of new cases recorded in the country. It was an imported case involving a 21-year-old Malaysian who was infected in Turkey. The Women, Family and Community Development Ministry, KPWKM, has set aside 35 million ringgit for nearly 4,000 operators of childcare centres, TASCA, under the National Economic Recovery Plan, Penjana. Its Deputy Minister, Datuk Siti Zailah Mohamad Yusof, said the allocation was aimed at reducing the financial burden of the operators due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Datuk Siti Zailah said the allocation was given depending on the type of childcare centre as a sum of 5,000 ringgit is provided for childcare institutions and 1,500 allocated for home-based nurseries. The one-off grant is channeled in stages subject to the application submitted by the operators via Social Welfare Department, JKM. Alhamdulillah, kita di Kementerian Wanita telah uh, memberi satu insentif khas eh, kepada pesawat taska dengan apa peruntukan RM5,000 kepada setiap taska untuk memberi kemudahan terutama dalam depan dengan uh, COVID-19 ini dan juga kepada taska di rumah RM1,500 kepada semua pesawat batas taska. Meanwhile, Datuk Siti Zaila said 1,575 childcare centres under the Welfare Department had reopened in stages as of yesterday. She said the ministry was satisfied with the newly reopened centres' compliance with the standard operating procedure to curb the spread of COVID-19. She also said that the reopening of the childcare centres is necessary, especially for parents who have resumed working at the office while wanting to ensure their children are safe from COVID-19 infection. Chief of Army General Tan Sri Afendi Buang said the Malaysian Armed Forces will not compromise or protect any of its officers or personnel involved in migrant smuggling activities in the country. He said stern action will be taken against those involved in such illegal activities. Commenting further, Tan Sri Afendi said police were still investigating the involvement of the personnel in the syndicate. 
Previously, Bukit Aman Criminal Investigation Department Director Datuk Jose Muhammad said 111 members of human trafficking syndicates, including 24 personnel from the police, military and immigration department, were detained in a special operation from 4th to 20th June. The members who are believed to be part of the three syndicates group known as the Otong Gang, the Halim Gang and the Hussein Muangdao Gang, which are also involved in other organized crime activities in Johor, Pera and Penang. Selangor Police Contingent has crippled a drug syndicate as they arrested five individuals in Bandar Puchong Jaya. Selangor Deputy Police Chief Dato Arjunaidi Muhammad said the police seized 150 kilograms of marijuana worth about 262,000 ringgit. Dato Arjunaidi said the syndicate believed to have obtained the drugs from a neighbouring country and smuggled it via the East Coast. He said during the arrest, the suspects were with two children aged one and three. So hasil pemeriksaan kita telah uh, menjumpai 50 uh, ketulan mampat kita percaya sebagai ganja pada anggaran berat uh, ni anggaran berat yang kita anggarkan yang semasa tetapi kita belum buat uh, yang detail lagi maknanya kita belum tolak bahan-bahan uh, lain lagi uh, seberat 49.425 kg okay. so nilai dia lebih kurang uh, Following that, the police raided a house in Bandar Namla Sierra that was believed to be used as a storage place where another 98 compressed marijuana bricks weighing about 97 kilograms were found. The police also seized two vehicles and 250,000 ringgit of cash. The case is investigated under Dangerous Drugs Act 1952. In Kedah, National Anti-Drug Agency AADK has detained a pair of twins in anti-drug operations in Kampung Singe Badong, Yan. Yan AADK Chief Muhammad Ramli in a statement said the twins, aged 21, tested positive for methamphetamine. Muhammad Ramli explained that during the arrest, the enforcement team arrested one of the detainees in a room full of tools related to drug addiction. He said the twins have been addicted with the drug since they were 18 years old. Both detainees were brought to the Yan AADK office for further action. The case is investigated under Section 3, Subsection 1 Drug Dependence Treatment and Rehabilitation Act 1983. That's it from us this afternoon in our top story, higher learning institutions to reopen soon. Tune in to News at 10 coming up at 10 this, uh, this evening on the Brita RTM News channel on my Freeviews channel 123. I'm Azlani Adani. Goodbye for now.